Hi, I'm John Scholl, president and founder of Service Quality Institute based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota in the United States. I'd like to share some ideas with you on how I believe you can create a service culture. I have been with my own company now for 40 years. I have focused solely on customer service for 31 years. I wrote the world's first customer service training program. What I have noticed over the last 30 some years is that organizations, what they do is they like to take their whole workforce and they like to come up with some kind of a magic program, get everybody all excited, and what I noticed a few months later, it tends to die. And then what we typically do is we wait five to ten years before we do something else again, because you don't want to rush into this stuff. And then we buy something new again, we get everybody all excited, and after a few months, it dies. And then what I notice, we wait another five to ten years. We buy something new again, we get everybody excited. And after a few months, it tends to die. I call this training. About 99% of all organizations in the world have done this. All companies in the last decade have done something. The problem is it was something. What we're doing is working with companies that want to create a service culture. And if you're going to create a service culture, you need something fresh, new, constantly moving it to another level. See, it's a little bit like going to college. You don't take one course and say, give me my degree. Where's the certificate? See, if you want to create a service culture, I think you need something new. I think you need something fresh. And it better be at least every four to six months. So the old school of doing something every five or ten years, the people will love it. The results are really cool for a few months, but you do not have the sustained impact if your real objective is to create a service culture. So we have a variety of products and technology that you can use to create the service culture. The first program we have is called Leading Empowered Teams, and this is a two-day seminar that teaches every department head, every manager and supervisor how to drive the service culture, how to look at systems and policies and procedures that should be changed, how to use empowerment, how to learn how to coach and reinforce behavior and how to build team teamwork. This is a, a two-day seminar. So let's say you have 2,000 employees and you got 200 people that are managers, department heads and supervisors. The employees do an incredible job using our stuff and the supervisor sits back and says, it's about time. No recognition, no feedback, it will die. So it's very, very important that we get everybody in a leadership position to understand that we're in the service business and your job is to coach and to drive a service culture. And then we have another program called Feelings. And I have many, many different versions of Feelings. Feelings is customized for a white collar environment, banking, insurance, uh, people with suits and ties and dresses. I have another version for service retail, more of a blue collar environment. I have two for healthcare, one called the essence of caring, the other called the spirit of excellence. I have another program called Feelings Customer Care for Supermarkets. We have another one for higher education called Connections. Feelings does three things. We change attitudes and behavior. We teach the skills of customer service, and three is we build employee morale and teamwork. I'm going to just show you a little bit of the packaging and the design that we use with Feelings. Everybody that's going to facilitate the program gets a user-friendly leader's guide. This is implemented in three sessions of anywhere from two to four hours each, spaced once a week for three weeks. And at the introduction, it tells the facilitator how to facilitate the program. Service Quality Institute and our channel partners, we train people how to facilitate this program. And then we have three different sessions and everything is very scripted and disciplined so that frankly if I had a company with 2,000 people, I might have 100 people doing the facilitation. A facilitator needs three skills, enthusiasm, peer respect, and a belief in service. Title is not a relevant issue. Okay? I have to have somebody with peer respect. So everybody that's going to facilitate gets a leader's guide. Feelings has three videos, one for each session, so you get three videos. And then we have a complete participant package. Everybody gets a book. 
all of our programs for the workforce are packaged so that they have simplicity, so that the material is gorgeous. This here is a 128 page book, two colors that each person gets, and at the end of the book are all the exercises that they're using. We ask that each individual read six chapters of the book in preparation for session two, six chapters in preparation for session three. It eliminates about eight hours of training time. There's homework at the end of each chapter. Each person gets their own book to keep, to mark, to use, to write up. In addition, we have a, serve, a technique card that reinforces the message that talks about how to handle irate customers, how to give good caring communications. And then we have uh, a performance standard that measures behavior. This is a device that measures all the attitudes and skills we're teaching and feelings, and then the scoring mechanism is, is on the back of the performance standard. And the most important thing to the participant is the certificate of completion. Everybody gets their own certificate. So let's say that you went through feelings. Let's say it's just an incredibly powerful program. By the way, people love feelings. It's my flagship program. Here's the problem I found when I first wrote the program. People would say, what's next? And back then I was a little bit younger. And I'd tell people, go back through feelings again. Well, what I didn't realize is that people got tired of going through the same stupid program. So if you want to keep people alert, if you want to keep them involved, you better have something new. You better say it differently. It's like going to college. You don't take the same course every quarter. You have new courses, new information. They talk about it differently. If you're studying biology, they have different classes. If you're into history, they have different classes. So the key here is you want something new, fresh, and different virtually every four to six months. So let's say that we did feelings. If that's all you did, it will die. I guarantee it will die. See, I don't have some magic program that you can dip your people in and it's going to change their life and you're going to take this 23 year old, he's going to go through let's say 8 hours or 12 hours of training and that individual is now going to be a perfect person for the rest of their entire life. Give me a break, okay? I mean, I think I got the best stuff in the world but it's not that good, okay? We are dealing with humans. So if you want to create a change of attitudes, if you want to create the service culture, it's got to be something new and fresh. So we have another program called SPEED. SPEED is a two session program implemented in two sessions of three to four hours each spaced once one week apart. What's the purpose of speed is how do we get everybody to think speed? How do I get everybody to do things 10 times faster than they've ever done it before? See, I believe strategically. If your organization was able to deliver your service, your product faster than any other competitor, you owed the market. That's how an Amazon built its business. That's how a Dell built its business. That's how Apple built their business. But again, let's say you put everybody through speed. I mean, it's a wonderful program. It's got a leader's guide, two videos, complete participant kit. It's going to die because we're dealing with humans, okay? So we have another program called Remember Me. And by the way, I don't care what order we go in, okay? It's the process I'm interested in. Remember Me is a two-session program implemented in two sessions of two to four hours each spaced one week apart and the concept is what would happen if you went to a place of business and they remembered you and they used their name. I think the most precious thing in life to each of us is our name and when somebody uses our name they remember us they recognize us it's magic and so remember me teaches employees why they got to do it and how they got to do it. Now there's a little bitty company based out of California called Apple. Apple is the largest retailer in the world uh, per sales, sales per square foot. And when you enter an Apple store they use an iPad and they ask for your name, your email address, they give you an appointment, and then what you might not know is they have described what you look like. So a few minutes later as you walk into the front of the store somebody's going to come up to you and say, John, we will be with you in just three minutes. And you're looking and you're thinking, how did they know I was John? You see, most of us wouldn't want to copy an Apple. Why would you want to have the most sales per square foot of any retailer in the world? See, these simple concepts work, okay? 
the problem is is you want execution with every single employee so let's say you went through remember me big deal so what it's gonna die so we have another program called exceptional service exceptional service is a one session program designed to get people to deliver exceptional service not just good service see I think good service doesn't get you in the door it doesn't keep any kind of a loyalty you gotta wow the customer you gotta provide exceptional service with every single transaction whether it be on the phone through the internet or in person every day so one session program three to four hours each and everybody gets a leader's guide there's one DVD and then there's a participant kit so let's say you did exceptional service so what people are gonna fall back because we're human okay I mean are you really gonna change everybody's life is you could put them through some little magic program it's not gonna happen so we have another program called the bad cost reduction campaign it's a 30-day campaign its purpose is to get everybody to look for ways to eliminate waste pass the savings on to the customer if you had a thousand employees if everybody saved just one dollar a day that's about 250 working days in a year that's 250 dollars a person that's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to generate two hundred and fifty thousand dollars it might take three million dollars or five million dollars in revenue you get the same thing with a cost reduction campaign and then if you're clever like an Amazon you pass the savings on to the customer and you get increased market share let me tell you what price is very very important to customers if you can start aggressively eliminating waste stupid things that people do every day you pass the savings on to the customer you have increased market share and then we have another program called loyal for life loyal for life is on service recovery because all of us are going to make a mistake sometime during the day I don't care how committed we are to customer service we are human so what happens when our company makes a mistake when I make a mistake here's my experience people lie see I teach four things with service recovery what I want the magic employee to do is to say mark it's our fault and then we teach four skills act quickly take responsibility be empowered and compensate and all of this has to happen in 60 seconds what I don't want is some employee to say sir you know I, I really don't know what the cause of this problem is and uh, tell you what let me get to my manager he is on vacation this week but next month I'll make sure we get back to you well that's not 30 60 seconds okay so service recovery is how do I get every single employee when there's a mistake made that they make your organization makes that within 60 seconds I can flip the customer and make lemons out of lemonade okay or lemonade I should say out of lemons that's a better way of describing it okay it's magic it works okay let me give you a little quick example let's say you got a restaurant okay you have a reservation for four people at seven o'clock the people come at seven o'clock you're the hostess and you say Mr. Scholl I apologize we're not going to be able to see you till 7 30 and there's nothing I can do about it what are you going to do for the next half hour you're probably griping and complaining now the hostess has practiced service recovery she says Mr. Scholl we have a jam and it's all our fault we're not going to be able to see you till 7 30. Mr. Scholl would it be okay if you and your party went into the bar area and had a couple drinks on us now when you're having the drink what are you thinking you're saying man this is cool I hope it happens more often what's the cost maybe it's a dollar per person let's say each person had two drinks now you spent eight dollars okay I got eight dollars spent I got four people that are probably going to tell 25 people each about what happened okay for eight dollars that's service recovery that's loyal for life a one session program one leader's guide one DVD one complete participant cut so let's say you went through loyal for life so what it's gonna die so we have another program called the good I I'm running out of lines here called the good idea campaign and the good idea campaign is on quality and customer satisfaction how do I get people to come up with ways to improve quality and customer satisfaction it's another 30-day campaign the participation rate by the way on our idea campaigns is often 80 to 90 percent 
Research shows that the typical suggestion system idea campaign has a participation rate of anywhere between 1 to 6 percent. Okay. We will have 10 to 20 times greater participation because everything we do is in a process and is built on recognition. So let's say you did the good idea campaign. So what? So we have another program called the Service First Video Library. I guess I better draw some more lines here. You know, we're running out of room. Okay. So the Service First Video Library is a series of 12 different DVDs. Each are about 15 minutes long. You can go in any order you want. You can use one a month for 12 months. You can use one a week for 12 weeks. You could do four sessions of four hours each. You download off the internet the facilitator material, the participant material. So there's no recurring costs. It focuses on things like how to handle irate customers, teamwork, empowerment, service recovery. And to create the Service First Video Library, we stole from every single program we got. Probably the least expensive program I have, the highest value. Some people, we have thousands of people that have first started with the Service First Video Library. And then let me tell you about the last program that's being released called Moving Up. This is going to be my favorite. I believe, let's say you got a company of a thousand people and you're the CEO. I believe that the limitation you have is that many of the employees are happy where they are. They're very content. They're a security guard. They're a janitor. They're a secretary. They're a receptionist. They're just content. Okay? You would like a high performing team. The problem is that your workers are saying, oh, well, I don't have your education. I don't have your good looks. I don't have your sophistication. I need to uh, remove the self-imposed limitations of those thousand people. I need people to dream. I need people to see themselves they can be. I need people to have some discontent, to want to be different, to want to be exceptional, to improve themselves so they can have a better life for themselves, so they can make more money, so they can move up in your organization. It's a two-session program implemented in two sessions of anywhere between two to four hours each, spaced one week part. It will have a leader's guide, two DVDs, a complete participant package. Now I don't care where you start with the service culture process. I believe if you want to change attitudes and behavior, you want to build the service culture, if you have something fresh, something new, you put your foot on the accelerator pedal going 100 miles an hour and you never stop, that's how you create a service culture. At Service Quality Institute, we'd love to work with you. We have partners all over the world that would be delighted to help you in your organization achieve a service culture. Again, thank you very much. I'm John Scholl.